everyone, como ya esta cafet? It's your girl Jasmine here and thank you so much for coming through to my channel today. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. We got lots going on here and I would love for you to join the fam. If you are already subscribed, make sure your notifications are turned on because YouTube is acting up and is messing up my bag. Today's video is low-key highly requested because so many of you guys want to get an update on my hair after I've done the hair transplant, what was it like, close to five years ago. Like it's been quite a while and you guys want to know what's up, you guys want to know what's up after locks and how I'm dealing with my loose natural hair and stuff and so I'm here to answer all those questions for you all today. I've been on the community tab asking questions, trying to reconnect with you all and a couple of you asked me questions about my hair so I'm gonna be answering them in this video today so buckle up grab some tea or coffee or water or whatever you drink and let's get down to business the first question comes from Gilmine Pierre hopefully I'm saying that right they ask I would like to know how you maintain length and how to prevent single strand knots thank you I'm not particularly on like a length journey because I've already done that when I had my locks. I had my locks all the way down to my back. That was my idea of a length journey. So right now I'm not focusing on length. I'm more focused on health but if you are trying to maintain length then doing protective styles is the best thing to do and not only that getting regular trims and that actually helps with preventing single strand knots when I go to my annual hair appointment at Sabine's she usually does a nice trim but throughout the year I just maintain it at home the Brooklyn Knight 278 asks what are your hair goals for the next year I don't know I'm thinking so many different things I am kind of curious to see what my hair would look like in a tapered cut i'm kind of scared to make the move though also kind of curious to see how i can naturally lighten my hair without using like bleach now i've heard of like lemon juice and like hydrogen peroxide i just want to find a safe way to lighten my hair so i can do really cool like highlights like golden blonde highlights and things my inspo behind it is dana bolden on instagram if you don't know who she is she is an amazing mom boss entrepreneur <sighs> like I love her and I love how her hair looks so I would kind of like to go somewhere along that style but we'll see we'll see I'm back on it Laureen Lelore asks do you have any staple items that you love using actually I do let me grab them now hold on these products are my heart they're my soul they're like my every being so the first thing i'm going to mention is my kinky tresses coconut mango hair butter this stuff is everything to me so it is thick it is whipped it is a butter and it smells good and my 4c hair loves this stuff whenever I two strand twist my hair up with this and I unravel it my hair is so soft a lot of times you get these misconceptions of 4c hair being rough and tough and quote unquote nappy but it's all about the products that you use and the products that work for your hair my hair needs butters my hair first needs to have moisture and then I lay on the butter baby because that's what's gonna soften your hair and keep it soft smelling good like it's everything so it smells like cake this is probably like my third tub of the coconut mango hair butter I invest in this like this is amazing and I actually found out about this through my blogger friend Ijama so Thank you, girl, for putting me on. The next thing is also from Kinky Tresses. This is the Avocado Infusion Hair Milk. This is a leave-in conditioner. I put this on right after I wash my hair to make sure that the moisture stays put. And then after the hair milk, of course, I follow up with the hair butter. But girl, these two together are a dream team. So in terms of sealing my ends, I really love using castor oil. Now I've used Jamaican black castor oil and that's great, but I ran out. So currently I'm using the Briogeo Be Well Organic Castor Oil. I like this because it comes in a spray pump. And you know, a lot of times you don't wanna have to keep dipping like that, you know, just pumping is just easy and like simple. 
So I do one spritz, like put it on my ends and then twist it up. That helps with split ends a lot. That helps with sealing in the moisture because the ends of our hair are super, super dry and putting something like castor oil, something so thick and viscous to the ends is really gonna help prevent dryness and single strand knots. So I love this product. If I want the slippiest slip, I go for my Moroccan oil treatment. This right here is everything. This oil is thin, but it has so much slip. I actually like mixing this with the hair butter, like these two together. Oh my gosh, your 4C hair is going to die and then live and then resurrect. It's great for my hair, it's great for my sister's hair. My sister has like 4B hair and Sophie, my niece, she has like 4A, 4B hair. All of us can use this Moroccan oil. It is great, and especially for Sophie because she's always running around. Her hair's always like tangled and stuff like this, but this right here will get your hair all the way together. Raw Foods Girl asks, do you still have alopecia or is it gone completely? Now, the traction alopecia, of course, that I mentioned back in 2015 as the reason why I was getting the hair restoration surgery, that has been minimized. I won't say that it's gone completely. I mean, here are my edges. I don't really know if um, you can see them all that well, but it's definitely a lot better than before. Um, and I want to say that this side was a lot worse than this side, but I'm actually comfortable like wearing my hair off of my face. Like, I don't have the same insecurity that I used to have back in the day, so that's definitely progress. Andrea Lachey asks, do you ever miss your locks and what styles are you excited to do with your loose natural hair? Do I ever miss my locks? No, I do think about it sometimes, especially when I like see pictures on Facebook. Sometimes Facebook has those like memory photos that, you know, they put up and I'm like, oh yeah, that was cool. I dealt with a lot during the time that I had my locks, you know, I dealt with a lot of like negativity, insecurity, but it also, I feel like opened up my third eye and I'm like definitely more conscious now of like what I put in my body, what I put in my hair, like, you know, how I treat myself. So I definitely appreciate the things that my locks taught me and was able to reveal to me. To your second question, as I mentioned before, I'm kind of thinking about doing like a tapered hairstyle. So I'm still on the fence about that because I don't, the way my head shape is set up, I don't know. Ombra V asks, do you experience any hair loss breakage after removing your locks or did you notice growth slash your hair remained healthy? Did I experience any hair loss and breakage? Absolutely, when removing my locks, yes. A lot of the hair that was within the locks were shed hair. And so once I combed my hair out, all of that shed hair left with it. Did I notice any growth? To be honest, I, I didn't notice any growth. Like, especially with 4C hair that has a lot of shrinkage, you don't really notice any growth. I'm fine with that. Like I said before, I'm not really on a hair growth journey. I'm on a healthy hair journey. Fancy Thomas asks, have you ever done a protein treatment? And if so, which product did you use? Actually, I do protein treatments at home. I actually have the thing in the shower. Let me go get it. Okay, so the protein treatment that I use every so often, not all the time, is the Camille Rose Natural Nengai and Tsubaki Strength Restore protein treatment. I love this because it feels really gentle on my hair. It doesn't feel very stripping. It doesn't make my hair hard or anything like that. And surprisingly, this product has a lot of slippage. And when I think of protein, because I've done protein treatments before, they didn't really feel slippy. Fancy also asks, what's your go-to protective style for colder months? All right, keep it 100. I'm gonna keep it real. My favorite protective styles is this finger coma unit. My favorite protective styles is wearing a head wrap with my beret or my head wrap with a hat. I just want to keep my hair away. I don't want to have to do anything to it. I don't want to have to style it because it just takes so long to do in the morning and I am the type of person that never prepares for the next day, so I'm always running late to things because I'm always thinking, okay, what am I doing to my hair? What am I gonna do to my hair? What am I gonna do to my hair? But this head wrap situation with the beret makes you look so chic, so model, okay? This finger coma unit, girl, it's a wig, okay? 
Anima Aksham Pong asks, can you please give us an update on your hair transplant and how your edges are now doing? Thank you. As I mentioned before, my edges are doing fine. I, you know, they're edges. I get to put edge control on them. If ever I do feel like my hair looks thin up front, then I just apply like hair fibers. Let me go get them. I am comfortable now wearing my hair off of my face, but every so often I feel like she's not on one. And whenever that's the case, I sometimes apply my hair thickening fibers to the front just a little bit. And you know, a little bit does go a long way. It matches the color and texture and feel of my hair. So I put this on and you can rinse it off whenever you go in the shower or whatever. So I've been using this. Anima also asks, would you recommend a hair transplant following your experience as I'm thinking of getting it done after watching your videos, but I'm unsure. Is it worth doing? Thank you. It was always in the back of my mind, but I never really went through with it in the beginning because I just wasn't sure. I, I felt like some of these dermatologists didn't really care about my hair, didn't really understand my hair. And then when I found Dr. Ose Tutu, like she really reassured me and like I'm so glad that I found her. I don't regret getting my hair transplant. I feel so much better about myself. I'm definitely more confident in myself. But at the end of the day, the worth of this procedure is all up to you. Not me telling you what to do, but you. For me, it was an investment that I needed to make in myself. And like I said, I'm glad I tried it, but you definitely need to weigh out the pros and the cons before you do anything because it is not a cheap procedure. Now the cost of it has gone up because the demand is high for it. So I definitely recommend you do your research, ask questions, contact Dr. Ose Tutu if you know, you're wanting to get quotes and things like that. But that's my response to you. Amatullah Mohammed asks, do you miss your locks? As I mentioned before, I don't miss them. It was a great experience for me back in the day, but that chapter has now gone and I am appreciative of that chapter of my life. The last question comes from N. Roberts. They ask, do you ever just wear twists with your own hair as a style for a couple of days? Currently, my hair underneath this finger comber is in two strand twists. No, I don't wear these two strand twists alone as a style. I usually just wear my head tie and my bonnet and just call it a day. So there you go. Those are all the questions I received. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have any other video requests for me, then definitely leave them in the comment section down below. And definitely check out more of the community tab because I will be asking you questions on there. I will be giving you a heads up on what the latest videos will be when they come out and all that jazz. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. As I mentioned before, comment down below, subscribe, turn on your notifications. I wanna thank you all so much for watching and supporting and subscribing to my channel. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.